The oppressive heat of the summer sun bore down on me like a physical weight as I stepped out of my car and onto the sandy shores of Cape Cod. The salty air, usually a refreshing balm to the soul, felt thick and heavy, as if the very atmosphere was weighed down by the grim task that had brought me to this normally idyllic corner of the world. I've seen my fair share of darkness in the human heart, but there was something about this case, the one they called the Lady of the Dunes, that chilled me to the bone. A woman, brutally slain and left to rot in the dunes, her identity obscured by the cruel hands of her killer. It was a mystery that had haunted this vibrant community for nearly half a century, a specter that refused to be laid to rest. That's why I was brought in. My name's not important. I'm a private eye. As I walked along the shore, my feet sinking into the soft sand, I felt the bright postcard-perfect facade of Provincetown was purposely mocking the grim reality of the crime that had taken place here so many years earlier. It was as if the town itself was wearing a mask, hiding its dark secrets behind a veneer of sunshine and laughter. I made my way to the spot where the body had been found all those years ago. The dunes loomed before me, their gentle curves and shifting sands, a stark contrast to the violence that had occurred here. I closed my eyes, trying to picture the scene as it must have been on that fateful day in July 1974. A young girl, out walking her friend's dog, stumbles upon a sight that'll haunt her for the rest of her days. A woman's body, badly decomposed, her head nearly severed from her shoulders. The killer had taken great pains to obscure her identity, removing her hands and teeth in a grisly attempt to thwart any efforts to discover who she was. As I stood there, the wind whipping at my face and the sun beating down on my neck, I couldn't help but feel for this nameless woman. She had been cast aside, left to the mercy of the elements and the indifference of the world. It was as if she'd been swallowed up by the very sands that had cradled her broken body. They'd hired me to find the truth, to give this woman back her name and her dignity. But the task seemed as daunting as trying to hold back the tide. The years had washed away so much evidence, so many potential leads. It was like trying to piece together a jigsaw puzzle with half the pieces missing. I spent days combing through old police reports and newspaper articles, trying to find some thread that might lead me in some direction. The theories were as numerous as they were outlandish. Some believed she was the victim of a notorious serial killer. Others thought she may have been an extra in a Hollywood movie. But none of these ideas seemed to hold water. As I delved deeper into the case, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched probably just my imagination, but it was as if the very shadows were alive with malevolent intent, like the killer himself was still lingering here, lurking just out of sight, mocking my efforts to uncover the truth. I interviewed the locals and tourists alike, trying to jog memories that had long since faded, hoping that someone, anyone, might hold the key to unlocking this mystery. But every lead seemed to dead end, every clue nothing more than a mirage shimmering in the heat of the summer sun. Days turned into weeks, and still I was no closer to finding the answers I sought. The weight of my coming failure hung over me like a relentless specter, dragging me down into despair. I began to wonder if I was chasing ghosts if the truth of what had happened to this woman was destined to remain buried forever in the shifting sands of Cape Cod. But then, as summer was turning to fall, a tiny sliver of information, gleaned from an old police report, pointed me in a new direction. Missing since the summer of 1974, Ruth Marie Terry, age 37. We finally identified her. With that information in my pocket, I wasn't about to stop. I'd done my job, I identified the woman, but I wanted closure, for her sake and mine. 
Following my lead, I came face to face with the killer himself. The monster who had stolen this woman's life and left her to rot in the dunes. The rat bag was the woman's husband, Guy Rockwell Moldavan. He and Ruth Terry had been married for only a few months before her murder. In that moment, I looked into his eyes and saw the darkness that lurked there. I understood the true nature of evil. He was a force that could wear a friendly face, that could hide in plain sight and strike when we least expect it. He was a reminder that the world is a dangerous place, full of shadows and secrets that we may never fully comprehend. But even in the face of such horror, I knew that I had a duty to the woman who'd been so cruelly taken from this world. I owed it to her to see that justice was done, to ensure that her killer faced the consequences of his actions. So I stood tall, my voice steady as I revealed the truth that had been hidden for so long. I watched as the killer was led away in handcuffs, his face a mask of defeat and despair. It was a small victory, but one that meant everything to me. Turns out he was also suspected in the deaths of another wife and his stepdaughter in the 1960s. He was never charged for those, but that wouldn't be the case this time. As I walked away from that place of tragedy and loss, I knew the Lady of the Dunes may have been taken from this world, but she would not be forgotten. Her story would live on, a testament to never losing hope for answers. I learned later that Guy Rockwell Moldavan passed away shortly after being incarcerated. Not the kind of justice he deserved, but justice nonetheless. And as for me, I knew I'd carry the memory of this case with me for the rest of my days. It had changed me in ways I could never fully articulate, but I also knew that I had played a small part in righting a terrible wrong, in giving a voice to the voiceless and a name to the nameless. The sun was setting as I drove away from Cape Cod, the fiery orb sinking into the sea like a ball of molten gold. And as I watched it disappear beneath the horizon, I couldn't help but feel a sense of peace wash over me. The darkness may always be there, lurking in the shadows and waiting to strike. But that's where I feel most comfortable. Poking at mysteries, righting wrongs, and standing against the darkness. A seeker of truth in a world full of lies. Lies.